Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrives in Tel Aviv come sunup. This is video from him leaving at Andrews Air Force Base. And watch very carefully for what he says and what he doesn't. President Biden subtly but importantly changed U.S. policy last night to ask for pauses to allow prisoners to come out, whatever that meant. Uh, that will not be enough for the ceasefire now crowd, and it will anger pro-Israeli Democrats, like those Democrats that took out a six-figure ad buy in Detroit to run this TV spot about Hamas sympathizer and Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. Her legislation would allow the terrorists to rearm themselves, and she refuses to answer even this horrific question. You can't comment about Hamas terrorists chopping off baby heads. Tell Rashida to leave. She's on the wrong side of history and humanity. Mark Melman of the Democratic Majority for Israel joins us now. Mark, it's good to see you. Thank you. Um, is the is the Democratic you. Party, you'd say, in a in a civil war at this point? In no way, shape, or form. The reality is the De Democratic Party is very united in support of Israel. We saw just the other day over 90 percent of uh, Democrats vote for a resolution condemning Hamas and supporting Israel. We're going to see when there's a decent, uh, clean bill uh, to uh, aid Israel. I think we're going to see over 90 percent of Democrats vote for that aid for Israel. So there's no civil war. There are a few people in the Democratic Party. Uh, Rashida Tlaib, prime among them, who has a very strong anti-Israel record. And we thought it was important for her constituents yeah. uh, and her neighbors to know that. Look, Cory, Cory Bush, somebody else who has a pretty strong anti-Israel record, has been very uh, offensive, I would say, uh, towards Israel and says a lot of things that are uh, borderline pro-Hamas and certainly anti-Israel. Uh, she found uh, her, her sincere concern for anti-Semitism now on Twitter. I strongly condemn the global rise of anti-Semitism, she says, just after she got a very well-funded primary challenge. This is my question, though, sir. Um, there, there seems to be equivocation from Antony Blinken and from the president and from others in the administration uh, about what the rules are for Israel and the urges of Israel for ceasefires and for pauses and for all these things that are very different than the way uh, the White House talks about, say, another strong U.S. ally, and that be Ukraine. Uh, take a listen to that conversation. I've never heard him say that Ukraine needs to follow international law. So he seems to be making a point of this, particularly when it comes to Israel. Does that signify that he has Well, there's, these are different conflicts. Right. And Ukraine was the victim of a massive invasion by a neighboring nation. And Israel was the victim of an invasion by a neighboring terrorist force. For, forgive me for being so blunt, but I can't help but feel as though there's members of the party uh, I'm thinking about Dick Durbin, for example, who's now saying there needs to be a ceasefire, that are, are bending a little bit to the, the far left of the party. How, how is that not happening? Well, look, I mean, the reality is the president, the secretary of state, secretary of defense, the leadership in the House and the Senate, none of them have called for, for a ceasefire. It's understandable that people want a ceasefire. I mean, in the normal course of events, that's if you want to stop war, you want to, you want a ceasefire. I think people don't quite understand that Hamas here is is committed to destroying Israel. Hamas is one of Hamas's leaders just on television the other day said they plan to do this over and over the thing what they did on October 7th the same kind of attack over and over and over again until Israel disappears. That's what they're committed to and a ceasefire as uh, former secretary Hillary Clinton uh, pointed out just yeah. allows them to Make preparations. Look, look, look Mark, you get you get no argument from from me here. I've been saying that for the past two weeks, and I've been predicting that this is going to happen. Uh, that the Democrats are get, especially are going to get squishy on on support for Israel. They're going to see the the pressure from the left on ceasefire now. Uh, there's going to be a lot of talk about civilians in Gaza, on and on and on, which, uh, granted, are in a terrible situation because of Hamas, not because of Israel. Uh, you keep saying that people don't understand what's happening, yet you just laid out exactly what is happening. So is it the, the far left of the Democratic Party is just blind and dumb? I don't understand what why they would be pushing for a ceasefire. Well, again, I, I think there are people on the far left who, who are malevolent, who are, who are not just ill-informed. Okay. I think that there are people, uh, there are some people who are advocating a ceasefire who are not malevolent uh, towards Israel or in general, but don't understand the implications of that 
in, in the real world in which Israel and Hamas operate. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.